Welcome to this tutorial where we will be implementing a simple search in Flutter Float when we have a Superbase database. So as you can see here, I have a table in Superbase of user data, of randomly generated user data, which has first name, last name, email and number columns. So let's say I want to implement a search function in my Flutter Float app, which allows the users to search for a first name of other people, of other users, and it will return all users, the information of users which have the same first name that they have searched. So how can we do that? Well, we will need to create an API in Flutterflow. So on this left hand column here, you can just go to API calls and you can define an API. We can just press add and we can create an API call. For the API call name, you can just name it as search users. And for the API URL, we'll just go back to our super base and we'll go to this fun to this menu API docs. Under tables and views, we'll cl click on user data and we'll scroll down all the way to filtering. You can click on bash. And under filtering, we will copy and paste this. So we copy and paste this. Don't include the open and close quotations. And we'll copy and paste this into our API URL right here. For the headers, we need to add some headers. We need to add two headers, which are our API key and our authorization. So. To show the API keys, we can just click on this and we can click on public. So it's right over here, just copy all the way from here for the API key. Don't include the quotations and we'll copy the authorization as well. And paste it into this one. Alright, and now for the actual API URL. We want to filter our table by our first name. So in order to do that, we have to change this ID to first name. And it's equal to I like dot and then it will be equal to the thing that we want to search for. So we'll just do an asterisk, a bracket, and then we'll say search string. And this will be the param parameter that we will pass into our API query. And then we'll just say and select the whole row, which matches this. So one last thing, we just have to add some variables. We have to add our search string variable. So under variables, we just define a search string. It will be of type string and it can have a default value of a space and we can just add the call all right so a little bit more explanation into how the api url works so this part sorry this part references your super base table and that will be taken from your super base api documentation it will be custom to your own super base table so that shouldn't change this part over here references your table name and your specific table in your super base project so this user data is the name of my table so user data it will be the same and this part is where the filtering takes place so this is the column name and this is the equal to so this will be the column name that you want to search in my case, it will be, we are searching on the first name. So it's first name over here. And this I like is actually a specific uh, Postgres filter. So there are all these different filters, which there's equals to, greater than, greater than or equal to. And for I like it's over here, it's an operator. It takes in the search string that we passed into it and it sees if the search string is contained in the first name over here 
and these two asterisks over here these asterisks are to uh, remove the case sensitiveness of the search string and these the bracket over here is to tell the API URL that it is a variable that we have defined and this select all it just means to select the whole row the entire row that and all the data in the row itself we can try testing out our API so under the value for the search string let's see we can try to search for this first name Alaska so you can just type Alaska and you can test the API call yeah and it does re it does return the correct uh, thing that we are looking for the correct user that we have searched for we can also try searching for a short form of the name alas and it should return the same thing yeah it does return the same thing you can try using a lowercase letters and it still returns alas which is what you want let's say we searched for a random thing a random search string and it should return now yep that's correct so that is our API done you can click on save and we can go back into our Flutterflow app so now we want to link our API call to our UI and our Flutterflow app so to do that I have a list view here which is already done I'll just click on the list view and I'll add a query on the list view itself it will be of type API call, not super base query, because we want, to, we want to call the API that we have just made. And there will be this search users API that we have just made. For variables, you want to set the variable to of the search string to our widget state, our text field uh, input that the user will input. Just click on confirm. And then now we have to click on this. We can give it a name of user items. And this is where the this is the variable that will return the data from the API call. And as for the value, we will click on this search users response. And we only want the JSON body, so for the available options, we'll just say no for the changes and click on confirm. And then we save this. Click on OK. So to link the UI itself, we'll first start with the name. We'll just give the first name for this text over here. So we change the text, we click on user items. And for the default variable, We'll click on the space for the default variable and for the actual variable we want it to be a json path and the json path will be dot and whatever column you want so for this i want it to be the first name so we copy and paste this column heading into this json path so be first underscore name then we can click on confirm you can do the same for the number as well. We'll change the text. Click on user items. Click on this, it'll choose JSON path. And for this, it will be dot and the number, since this is the column name for the number of our users, for the phone number of our users. The default variable can be zero. Yep. And lastly, the email is also the, exactly the same thing. Click on user items item. Click on JSON path. And the JSON path will be dot. And whatever the title of the column in your super base table is. So it will be email. Default variable can just be a space. And the last thing is that whenever the user types in an input or changes the input, we want to update the whole page and query so that the user user tiles here in the list view also get updated whenever we change our 
search string in the user input. So we click on the text view, we'll scroll down all the way down to additional properties and we want to update the page on text change. So that will refresh the, U, the API call as well as the UI to show only the most current users that the user wishes to search for. Alright, so that's it for our simple search. It should all be done now and we can try testing it out in the test mode. Okay, so now it is returning all of the users since the initial search is, a, is now. So it will return all the users. Now when we try to search, let's say BAL, you can see that it's updated to ball, which is the person that we are trying to search for. Let's try, let's try to search for Chuko. You can search C H U C O. Yeah, and we are, we can see that Chuko has indeed shown up over here, and we can see that the number, the Chuko number eight eight six four two eight eight six four two eight, as well as the email is reflected there as well. So thank you for watching. That wraps up this simple tutorial of how to implement a simple search in Flutterflow when you have a Superbase table base, when you have a Superbase database. I hope to see you around again and thank you and goodbye.